Even when you feel low, you can still go Even when you feel slow, you can still go Even when there's no hope, you can still go I never answer to no man, I still go Go, go Hello, Railcast fans, and welcome back to another edition of Railcast Talk Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Savetic, and I know it's a day late of what I normally do when my hair's a little wet. I just got out of the shower. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're not, then you don't really care. Um, just a busy weekend this weekend, um, so I had to push off normal Sunday podcast to Monday, so I'm actually recording on Sundays when typically I try to record like on Fridays and Saturdays. Typically Saturdays because I like to have like all week worth the content <laughs> of like you know players being signed and stuff like that and i know i missed uh i believe it was mikey that i missed or it might have been Peyton. i think it was peyton that i missed um who was signed um i believe in the 31st i think the website was down so that's why i didn't see it and i, I also checked the the uh, point streak because that's typically on there now which if you go to point streak everyone's updated on the roster so um obviously i, I missed that portion of it and so on and so forth so we had two two this week uh mikey perez um and peyton long uh <clears throat> starting off with mikey he's from uh anaheim california he is 24 years of age he is 5'11 185 pounds he was drafted out of ucla um which um you know ryan would have really enjoyed if if he uh stayed another year uh, but he was drafted to the Minnesota Twins in the 15th round in the 2021 draft. He is a right-hand batter and thrower. He mostly plays second, but he mostly can play anywhere in the infield. Um, and he had a bit of outfield experience. Um, I believe most of that outfield experience was... Um, I just split between high A and single A, and I... I still have to look at the difference. I know you have low A, single A, and high A. There's just so many different single A where you can rank in between that. Um, but most of the time, his, his experience was mostly at second base. So he's probably going to be the new second baseman. Um, as we know that uh, Gio Diaz is moving on to the um, Mexican League. Well, that's still to be determined how that all works out <laughs> on that portion of it. Uh, but looking more... Um, you know, he reached AAA with the St. Paul Saints, who, if most people that, that listen to this podcast already know, but they were a part of the American Association uh, a couple years ago, but now they are the AAA affiliate of the Minnesota Twins. Um, he he had one at bat where he hit a three-run home run, and then they must have sent him down after that, um, which is kind of ironic. I think he, he must have been um, like a pinch hitter in a, in a key situation, and he just took that part of the situation and it made it happen and that just kind of you know I, I i don't truly sometimes understand what goes on in in minor league baseball and affiliated ball because i know a lot of it plays like politics wise so it, i know like looking at like his stats um his offensive stats prior uh to reaching the triple a portion of it um you know they were pretty good i mean they were he he seemed to move um up the ranks pretty fast to a certain extent uh, i mean he was uh in 2021 he was playing rookie ball and, and single a and he was batting uh, uh an, on average of 533 and in single a he was batting 500 in the rookie ball league he was batting on 7 uh, 750 um <coughs> and then once he got into the 2022 season, uh, he played the one game in, in St. Paul, but he was below uh, 230 um, basically all the way through the rest of to 2023. Uh, so I, I don't know what happened be, behind that portion of it. He didn't, you know, uh, most of his success uh, really came in the later half of him playing I wouldn't say his his draft year in 2021. He batted a 2.31. He had an uh, uh, on base percentage of uh, 3.47 and the slugging uh, 4.48 and OPS of 7.95, which is really good. Um, being a 7.95 with having a lower, and that's where you know you kind of have to the OPS kind of takes in perspective of uh, everything else in that situation. So you know he's having that that higher end ish uh, part of it. 
what I think what we're going to get, obviously, if I have it up, I'll probably put it like the first half of the podcast. Um, and the intro is his uh, diving catch he made. Uh, that's what we're going to probably expect from Mikey. I don't really see him. Uh, he's going to, I, I, He's gonna be probably. I, I know. Let me see if I'll, I'll pull it up. I, I should have this up beforehand, but you know, sometimes I start recording and then I'm like, oh crap, I need to pull this up. <laughs> um. So, uh, they. This is what uh, Mikey per. Or that's what Lamar Rogers says about Mikey. Uh, he uh, a Cal a Southern California native. A UCLA Bruin alum, Mikey comes to our Railcats team after having a positive conversation with MLB Context about his overall potential. Uh, added Rogers, his versatility in the infield with impressive career defensive statistics. I I'll be looking for him to provide a spark offensively, getting on base either the top or the bottom of the lineup. He also swiped 75 bags over the last two seasons from a Single A to Triple A in Minnesota Twins organization. Now, you read that and that. That portion of like single A to triple A that that <laughs> he skipped over double A, so uh, anyway played one game in triple A, so it's kind of hard to, to to base some of that when you kind of look at the stats. I I don't see I, I see him being a good solid second baseman, which is something that we've been um, spoiled with over the past couple of years. You know, with Michael Woodworth and Gio Diaz coming in, uh, you know. It could be one of those situations where if he's a better fielder at shortstop, he may get moved over to short and um, Miguel Sierra move over to second. I don't know how exactly that's going to work, but that's something that you could take in perspective. Uh, so just really looking overall at, at Mikey, I think he's just going to be a solid person for either at the top or the bottom of the lineup. Uh, he's going to get on base is something that we're going to be productive. I'm curious to see if how he is situationally. Uh, you know, because sometimes the, the, the batting average numbers are, are a little bit, you know, I, I know there's a battle amongst uh, batting average and all that other stuff. I mean, you know, you kind of just look at his overall career stats. You know, he's batting just under a 250. Uh, his on bases is over a 350 and his slugs at a, a 4, 415. Uh you know, he, he I think he's going to be that guy that has a bit of that sneaky power. He has 40, 41 home runs at, uh, you know, 1,153 at-bats. We'll, we'll, we'll see how that kind of spells itself. I, I just think he might just be that guy that has that sneaky potential uh, to really drive the ball out of the ballpark. So I'm, I'm just curious to see uh, what his... Um, uh, the one thing that I really, when I'm really looking at it here, is, is what kind of concerns me. To maybe the sneaky power is maybe something that I, I missed when I was write, writing writing the article. Is his his strikeouts are 266 to 138 walks. Like for me, as a second baseman, you're going a, a, a standard second baseman is a guy that's going to be able to. Uh, play second defensively very well and he's going to get you on base he's typically your speed guy doesn't have a lot of power uh but in this situation it looks like mikey has the power but like the strikeouts kind of concern me is he's going to be able to play situationally especially if lamar rogers is expecting him to be a spark at the top of the bottom of the lineup because if you put him at you know if you're relying on a guy to be at the top of the lineup or even in the nine hole to be your second leadoff hitter and he's not going to get on base like that he doesn't do you any good being there and if he's not a situational guy if you know if there's a guy on on, on first and you have to hit and run we saw it last year a lot uh, with with Lamar Rogers is his ability to to hit and run a lot and, and use that to his advantage and they've done it you know they he has the players he had the players last year to do that <clears throat> So if we're not going to get that from Mikey, you know, he's probably going to be you know, like your eighth, seventh hitter overall. And he's just going to play really good second base. And I mean, if that's just the case that he's going to be that guy, then that, there's nothing wrong with that. You're going to need that. Um, it's just if you're looking for him, I, I know his potentials there. So maybe he's going to have a breakout year and he's going to, you know, provide 
that that spark that we're going to need and i can be completely wrong which is perfectly fine i mean p- please prove me wrong <laughs> in this situation because i like being proven wrong in, in these situations because this is just what i'm seeing is like yeah college really good um you know his three years in college he was batting a uh well <coughs> been at two 243 um I guess I should take that back a little bit. I think it's a summer league, but like I said, the summer league and the and the the, the two the the um the year that he played in in single A when he had I know he only played like ten games, but you know he was averaging uh, was it a five um I, I saw it somewhere uh yeah he was batting a five thirty three so like that's the, I mean if that's the potential I'll take that I mean uh you know. It just could be one of those that he wasn't, you know, he was only 21 years old and, you know, 22 and 23. So maybe he was just um, so concerned with the the grind and trying to move forward that, you know, he doesn't take take a step back and realize what the situation may be. Uh, So I'm I'm interested to see what we're going to get with Mikey. Um, I just think he'll be solid defensively is my is my big thing here. Um, it's so hard to the de- defense and, and player reference or baseball reference is so hard because it, it takes like every opportunity they've had and it throws it around. Um, I think when I did the article, um, he, um, that was, that's, I, I couldn't get his overall, but I mean, he's going to give probably between, a uh, a 993 and a 997, fielding percentage so i mean with the opportunities that's gonna that's gonna be helpful and i mean at a second baseman you should have that higher numbers uh because the throw is not very you know not very far you're you'll have time uh most of the time to throw the ball over it's just when you kind of get into that double play range with that how that's all gonna throw itself into perspective um so let's go over to peyton long peyton long from uh iowa drafted by the milwaukee brewers in the 30th round in the 2019 draft uh, from Central Methodist University in Missouri. Uh, he is 6'4", 210 pounds. He's a right-handed thrower. He, um, I, I really like his number. I mean, he only played, uh, so he played 2019 and then the COVID year, and then he played in 2021. Um, I, I think, you know, looking at his college career, I mean, he he gave his average his ERA was 231 or 233 uh 92.2 innings pitched um he started in 15 games he's going to be a starter and i think really what failed him in Milwaukee was that when he was playing rookie ball they started him in you know four games but when he moved up to single A they put him as a reliever he didn't start any games and his ERA skyrocketed to uh 839 so like it's it's so hard with relievers to judge on how it's going to roll itself around. So like this is one of those situations. And then when you go to Rocky mountain, he started in 18 games. He played 19 and had an ERA of five, five ninety six. Now you may take that in perspective going, Hmm, well, when you look at that way, the, um, Rocky mountain, up in the mountains obviously the era statistics can go flying out of you know out of, out of the roof and you really really expect like his home run ratio to go flying but this guy doesn't give up much home runs i mean he gave up four in college um he gave up two in rookie ball in uh 12 games and he gave up seven in in 22 games played in single a but he only gave up uh nine home runs in 99 point, uh, 99.2 innings last year it, that's that's impressive i mean it i think that's been one of the 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 hard parts or the um situations that i don't think the rail cats have really put them that it seems like most pitchers are going to give up the long ball in, in in situations i mean everyone's going to give the long ball up once in a while but i just think that the team has always kind of seemed to be riddled with it a little bit and to see a starting pitcher who looks like he's going to be effective um, you know, I, I think he's going to give up a lot of hits, uh, but he's not going to give up a lot of walks and he's not necessarily going to strike out a lot of people. I know in college, he, he averaged 11 strikeouts per nine. Um, but last year he only averaged six, uh, 6.1. 
he he's going to be a guy that's going to give you long starts, which is something that I think the Railcats need. You don't they don't have those pitchers that can go a hundred innings per year. I, you know, I know Harrison Francis did it. I know there was a couple people that were close last year, but like you need that more on a consistent basis because you're not going to waste so much on your bullpen. And I know that Lamar Rogers like to have a strength of a bullpen situation, but I, I just think in this situation to have another guy that's not going to give up much home runs, he, you know, and that he's probably not going to throw a lot because he gets a lot of contact. So in those situations, you're just going to have to rely on the defense to play. And I think that's just one of those where you have to rely on their defense. And I don't have an issue if this guy is going to give, you know, if he's going to put the ball in play, then go right ahead and put the ball in play. We just got to have the defense to back him up. And that's just going to be a situation of how well is Lamar Rogers going to construct that defense. And I'm not, I, I, you know, you have a stellar outfielder. It looks like you're going to have a stellar third baseman. You're going to have a stellar second baseman. Uh, you'll have another probably really good outfielder. Uh, you'll have, a couple guys behind the plate that are going to be productive. You're going to have a good first baseman. You're going to <clears throat> you're going to have those options. So I think bringing a guy in like Peyton will help that situation. I know he, he's not the flashiest guy. He's not the um the 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 I think was it Peyton? Uh, what's the other Peyton in the, in the league? Is it Gray? I don't remember. But you know he's not he's not he's not that caliber. But he could be that caliber. I mean he's 25. He's going to be 26. He's going to come more into his prime. And I think, you know, the competition level is going to be higher, but I just think with the elevation numbers, he's good. You're going to see more of a, I would say a 350 to four or a four to 450 in the ERA situation here. So I, I just think that this is just going to be a guy that's going to be able to keep the team engaged because he's just not dominating completely on the field. And I think that's going to lessen the load of mistakes on the fielding side of things. As I just wanted to keep this one nice and short uh, just because I didn't have the full time to kind of get everything that I wanted in uh, this week. Um, if you get a chance, um, I, I tweeted out and I put it on Facebook as well. The Indie Ball Report did a interview um, with Mike... Oh, let me look it up real quick. But he's the uh, Juliet Slammers uh, head coach manager. And I that was a really, really good interview um, that, that that they did with him. And I, I mean, if this is, um, let me see here. Um, I think I put it on Facebook. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> I think I put it on Facebook is... Uh, um, uh, oh, uh, Mike Pinto. There we go. Mike Pinto. Uh, he was a stellar interview. Really, really good. Really informative. Kind of a bit more of the background of the the situation. And for those that aren't going to go back and listen to like the week prior, they had like a coach's carousel where they went through and they ranked all the managers and their situations and they gave them a rating. And there was only like a select few. Um, Kansas City manager got an A. Uh, so it, it, it's hard. And not a lot of them got A's. Most of them got B, B minuses, but they gave him a B minus and he took that and like it, it printed out their picture. So like they, they, that's where if you hear them talking about a grade, that's what the grade's from. Um, it, a really good interview. I, I like his uh, five steps to being an indie ball, indie, indie ball player. What, you know, what kind of manager he is, the connection that he makes with the players and um I just I think Juliet's got a really really good coach down there, so it's gonna be interesting to see how their season wraps around. But if you get a chance to listen to that podcast, do that. It's it's really good. Um, so it's just any ball report on uh, Spotify, Bean Pot, Pod Pot, not Bean Pot, Pod Bean, um, or just go to any ball report or any ball nation on their Twitter social media sites. They they'll have it up there. But that's gonna wrap it up for me. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, rest of your evening, whenever you're watching this, and. Uh... Go Cats. The 0-2. Swing and a miss, strike three. Wrap this one up in green and white.